All right, ladies and gents, so we are starting the isometric sketching. So what we're doing is trying to figure out or setting up the way that we will be drawing uh, our sketches, our technical sketches, uh, moving forward for all of our projects, starting with our skimmer that's coming up, but we also have to, but we need to understand how this actually works and the whole purpose behind it, which again is giving us that proportional 3D shape or three-sided shape that three-sided shape basically gives us um, an object that we set at about 120 degrees. Um, and then we are able to see the three different sides depending on which one we were looking at. And what that means is that right here, as you can see on the left side, uh, that image, you have your top front and then you have your right view. On the other side is your top left side and then your front view. Now, obviously in this picture, you can't actually tell, but for the most part, the images are, so each view is colored in the exact same color. So front view is identified as red in this particular case. So both images are colored in red. The top is colored the same in blue. The right side technically is colored in yellow and the left side I believe is colored in purple. So that, what that means is basically is every sketch that you do, uh, you have to label all three views. Uh, you have to find the, the corner to start everything. You have to kind of find that corner that starts at the very beginning or which one is actually the closest is where you're gonna start. Now from there, once you get everything set up, all right, you need to label how many front views do you have for each object? How many top views? How many right views? All right, so those all have to be labeled. And again, similar as we kind of go through this whole process is that when you look at this image right here, you'll notice that it is also la uh, labeled based on different corners, which again is something that you will have to do. Uh, the very first one is obviously kind of set up, gives you nice little bumpers or guardrails to kind of help guide you through this process. When we move to the next set, all right, which will be questions one, two, and three, you'll notice that uh, there is absolutely nothing there. There is no guardrails. It doesn't give you the front top or right view does not give you the um, the A, B, C, D for each corner. So that's the part that you will have to create and identify. Now, so to kind of go through this, this is what we're gonna look at to kind of start. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of go through and actually label or identify uh, all three views. Now, as I said beforehand, here's your top, front, and then I'm gonna put R because we're looking at the right side. So I'm gonna label each one so that way I know exactly which color is gonna represent which. So all green for every top view that I have. All my front views will be colored in for purple and then my right views will be orange. All right, and again, this helps identify. So three things that you have to do when you're setting this up or as you go through and identify everything, uh, you have to label whether it's a top, front or right view. You also have to color in each one of those based on what you've already identified it as. So in this case, our top, which is right here. All right, here's another top, which is right here. So there's two top views based on this image. There are two front views as well. So I'm leaving those with T and F. And there are one, two, and then here's my third, my third right view. Now, from there, all right, what we're gonna do next is basically kind of color them in, shade them in. So you will have to do this for every single one of your drawings that you were doing. Like I said, I'll walk you through on the very first one, uh, give you a little bit, an idea of how this is going to work. And front view. Now again, what you'll notice is all these really, really dark lines that kind of outline this actual object are called your object lines. Now, when we get ready to set up, when I get ready to set up that circle on the top, I will show a the construction lines, as you can kind of see in the directions. Those construction, construction lines are very, very faint, very light, and normally will not be seen once everything's kind of colored in or once you actually create that circle. So again, making sure everything's listed and labeled. All right, so again, this is what you have to do to start. Now, from here, all right, so what I'm gonna do, all right, so what I wanna do is kinda have my starting point. My starting point usually is gonna be right here. As I said beforehand, you'll notice at this point, 
So right here. So the object is tilted or angled at 100, oops, 120 degrees, which means that this gives us about a 30 degree angle here and a 30 degree angle here. All right, now again for both sides, that way you get an idea of what this looks like. All right, now to start on the next part, make it a little bit bigger, make sure you guys can see everything. All right, so like I said, you, we've got to find each one of these, which we've already done, but this is what you're going to be doing in the future for uh, numbers or objects number one, two, three, four, and five. So kind of key things that when you're setting this up, we want to make sure that we are counting each block now on this part, because again, there's it's kind of already set up for us as far as the guardrails for it. You want to make sure that you do count out the number of blocks and match it up correctly. That is where everything kind of go off or... Uh, your drawing won't end up in the right way and also based on the correct angles that you're also uh, drawing this object at as well. So we're gonna start here which is H which happens to be the closest corner to us. All right and again when you look at the other ones that's something that you're gonna have to determine which corner is the closest to you. So key thing or a good thing to kind of get in the habit is kind of put in a plotted point or a dot right there. So I'm gonna go from H to G. So here's my G. So what I'm gonna do is count the number of blocks from H to G. One, two, and then I draw my line. Now understand when you do this, for the most part, ladies and gents, is that you'll notice that, um, you know, you wanna kinda of set it up, you wanna make sure that you do fill in or create those nice solid lines for each one of these. All right, so going from looking at and kinda of comparing back and forth, like I said, this is how I'm using, so I'm going from G to this corner, this top corner right here. What I want to do is kind of fill in that first view. So I'm gonna put a plotted point there, draw my line, set up right there. All right, so again, I had to go up one block. Now, when you get or you have your own isometric paper or there is a PDF that is posted on Teams, that one is so much more clear, and so much easier as far as to identify each and every single the lines. These are kind of uh, faded in the background, so it makes it a little bit difficult to identify. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to H. So going back to H from G again is one, two, two blocks right here, draw that line. And then I'm gonna close it off going from this top part, going straight down to that H. And voila, I have my first front view panel. Now I'm gonna kind of continue from here. So let's say if I wanna go, uh, I wanna do the next one, which is our right view. I'm gonna go from H to F, and one, two, three. All right, so it's three blocks. And then I'm gonna go up here from F to technically what is actually E, which is right here. So I'm gonna plot that point. I'm gonna plot that point right there. Now I can draw that line. Label, ladies and gents, make sure that you do label each one of these corners, these edges, so that we clearly know what you are doing and where you're going with this. So now I gotta go back, again, one, two, oh, sorry, one, two, three. Oh, All right, voila, now here's our right side. And again, I would color that in. So like I said, I've already kind of labeled uh, my right. And I'm just doing this right now. You don't have to do it until the very end or you can do it as you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and color that in just so that way you guys at home can identify what we're doing. And then my front is a purple. All right. all right, so now I'm gonna close this off. So what I'm gonna do is kind of look at, so I'm gonna try and get all the way to this angle so I can also close that right view off, but also enclose the top. So I'm gonna go from here, so I gotta count. It's one, two, and then when you look back at the image, you have to go one more, so it's technically three. Draw that line. All right, voila. Now, um, starting at this intersection, before going back over to here to finish off that right uh, view, I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna count back towards G to the top part. One, two, three. A lot of points already there. This lot of points there. Voila. All right, there's my top view. Right. That top view is colored in by green. Yay. I'm only gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna do it kind of light because I want to finish that other 
portion of it. So I'll come back to that in just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna get the next one. So the right corner or that little right view right here, all I have to do is go down one block. So one right here, put a plot of point. Boom, set it up. All right. All right. Now, what I wanna start on is the next one, which is going from this intersection to D or to the plot of point D. So again, it is just one block. Right. And then from D to B, I need to count. So it is one, two, three. So again, I'm just counting this part over here. Again, one, two, three. Do that right here. One, two, three at this point. I'll label it B. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that line. Fantastic. Now, next part. So I'm gonna go from B to A. So it is one block when you count that over, label it A, go ahead and draw that line. Now I'm gonna go from A to C, so it's one, two, three, four. Now, when you guys set this up on a larger piece of uh, asymmetric paper, you don't really have to worry or be concerned as far as like placement of this, because you should have more than enough space. But in other parts, uh, in this particular case, this activity, you definitely have to because again it only gives you so much all right so from c to right over here go ahead and close that off and then we'll go back to b so again that's one two three four four spots or four blocks voila all right so now i got my top and i have my front now complete i'm gonna go ahead and finish this one off as well which is right here all right, voila. So now we're all set. So I'm gonna color these in, make sure. All right, on my top. Now every single line that I've made so far is basically called a object line. There's that. That front is purple. So again, key thing is making sure that you do color in. You also label each view. And then you also add the different letters for each corner. Again, that just helps to keep you organized as far as where you're going and what point, what points need to be plotted. Uh, and my last one, which is right here. Now, as I said before, I talked about the uh, object lines versus the construction lines. Now I wanna draw a circle, because again, I have to make this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just make these really light lines right here. So when I make these light lines, they're basically nice, guidelines for me to create my circle. My circle is gonna have a little bit darker. All right, voila. And then now I'm all finished. All right, so again, that is everything as far as for isometric. Uh, one key thing as far as when you're getting this, the next part set up, ladies and gents. So on what you have to do for your assignment is basically looking at numbers one and two. I'm going to kind of go through this, so it's just kind of give you a um, little starting points. Again, make sure that you do identify the front, the top, and the right side. you got to do that for each and every single one of them. What you're looking at again, so looking at this, we have one, two, three, so it's like you're looking straight down on the object. There's one top, there's two, there's three. All right, now... For your front view, again, there's one and there's two. So this whole section here, this whole section here, both are your front views. And then your right view is right here. One, two, and then three. So now at this point, you gotta figure out which corner is closest to us. And again, this is all set up the same way as before. It's at 120 degrees. So I set this up. I'm just gonna kind of do this, it gives you an idea. So this helps us identify this as our starting point. I'm gonna label that A. I'm gonna label this corner B, C, D, E, here's F. I might do G over here, H. All right, now, so when I get ready to set this up, again, make sure that you count the number of blocks, especially because you need to set this up. So there's one, two, three, four, five right there. There was five blocks there from A to B. There's one, two, three, three, four, 
three blocks from B to C. One, two, three. There's three blocks from C to D. And the same thing here. One, two, three. Three blocks from D to E. Now, going from that point forward, so from E to G, one, two, three. Again, there's three spots there. And then going from A to H, one, two. Technically, that is three. So this is important. The key thing is making sure that you are setting this up correctly and that you have enough space. So I'm gonna do that. So I can do a plot of points ahead of time so that way I know exactly where I'm going to be. So here is, I'm gonna place A. I'm gonna go ahead and count these just to make sure that this whole thing fits. So it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, that's B. And plus I don't have to have that much to erase. Then I need to go straight up to C. One, two, three. And then let's say D, just to make sure we are fit inside this little box. One, two, three again. Sweet, we're right in there. Now D to E, one, two, three. All right, and there's E. Now, I'm gonna come back down here. So right now, we definitely fit for the length. Again, we're going at this angle, it's 120 degrees. You have, or a 30 degree going that direction. Same thing this way. So from this point, again, it's one, two, all right. So again, just kind of quickly show you. So this, we're at A, and then I went to this corner right here. Then I need to come forward one block, and then over one block, all right? So that would give me H, and then if I go up one, two, that would give me G. So my whole outline of this object actually fits within that graph, and now I'm all set and ready to go, all right? And then again, you do the same thing. When you get to number two, the key thing is, ladies and gents, is identifying this part right here. All right, you'll notice that here is that corner spot. It's right there on the edge, clearly. But when you go down to this angle, that one is actually not. You go down to the angle, so it's only one block, but you need to go up, straight up, just a little bit, and then plot your point there. So when I knew, go to mark this one, again, same idea. So from here, I'm moving back to this corner where I clearly see the lines. Move over one, two, and then go up just a hair, and I'm all set. And then right here, again, once you get everything set up as far as location, you have this plotted point, you have this plotted point that you'll make on your graph. You also have this plotted point. You're gonna need your ruler to draw that line but the key thing is don't start drawing your line you have to make those plotted points first then do that all right so that way you're making a good connection or good strong line all right so that is our isometric again you are completing questions number one two three four and five do the practice so that way you clearly understand what you're doing uh, if you have any questions just email us and we'll be happy to kind of walk you through it thank you